Okay, so uh, good morning everyone. Um, my name is Laura Kriner and as Sebastian and Gerd before me, I am from the Kirchhoff Institute for Physics in Heidelberg. And as you see, my topic is neuronal dynamics, silicon versus biology. So, and uh, as Gerd and Sebastian already told you, um, our group builds accelerated low power neuromorphic hardware. And we are doing this by designing circuits that follow the same differential equation as theoretical neuron models. And on the current uh, prototype chip that Sebastian and Gerd showed you, uh, this neuron model is the adaptive exponential integrate and fire neuron. Mihai already mentioned that briefly before. And um, so it is not our goal to build like a perfect representation or replication of this adex neuron model, but what we are trying to do is to find a balance between the small size of the circuits, the acceleration, and um, the low power consumption on the one side, and for example, precision and parameter ranges on the other side. By parameter ranges, I mean that in a software simulation, you can set, for example, like this parameter G leak, the, the leak conductance, to any value you like. But on hardware, you have a certain range within which you can set it. Um, so that's what basically where I work. I, um, or we are trying to verify that although we have this constraint, constraints due to the small size and the acceleration, um, this, the key features of the implemented models are still captured. And um, what you need to do is you need to verify that during the uh, production process or the design of the chip, because if the chip is fabricated and then not, you let notice later that uh, you're missing something of the model, then it's too late, you have to wait for a new chip. So what we are doing is we are using transistor level simulations of the neuron. That means every transistor in the neuron is simulated in detail um, using the data which is provided by the manufacturer. And um, I have an example of these transistor level simulations of the neural circuit. Um, in the prototype which we are, were building before, there was a leaky integrate and fire neuron. And now we extended it to the adaptive exponential inter, uh, integrate and fire neuron. And these firing patterns you see here, that um, occur, they occur if you stimulate an adex neuron with a constant current. And they cannot occur if you just only have a, a lift neuron. So uh, we use them as a test to basically show that the adaptation and exponential terms work in our new circuits. And what you see here on the right is uh, the transistor level simulations of the new, new circuits. And you see that they are not identical to the uh, patterns you see on the left, but you see that the general traits or the general characteristics of the patterns are there. For example, like in this pattern, you have short bursts of spikes, then you have a long pause, and then you have another burst of spikes again. And this is also clearly visible here. So, um, what you also should note that here on this side you have biological voltages and biological times and on the right side um, you have hardware voltages and hardware times so the uh, voltage is scaled and the, ha and the time is a thousand times faster. Um, what is also new on the new prototype chip is that we have um, multi-compartment components which allow us to connect single ad adex neurons to a multi-compartment neuron consisting of like multiple adex neurons. And um, an additional new feature uh, is that we, that we have a new reset mechanism which allows us to emulate plateau potentials as they occur or similar um, to the ones that occur during calcium spikes or NMDA spikes in biology. And um, this allows us, for example, to replica replicate the backpropagation activated calcium spike firing which was measured by Matthew Lacum in a pyramidal neuron. You see that here on the left. And um, this mechanism basically uh, consists of three sub-experiments, like here, here, and here. And in each sub-experiment, you measure three voltages at different locations of the neuron. That's the colors. And um, in the first experiment, you stimulate only the dendrite. And then you see that there is a, a PSP. And this PSP weakly propagates into the soma. Like that's the blue, very flat curve here. Then in the next experiment, you stimulate the soma. And the soma just spikes once. And then in the third experiment, you combine those stimulations. And then you see a very different response. You see plateau potentials in the uh, dendrite, and you see a, a burst in the soma. And here on the right, you see that uh, using our multi-compartment circuits, we can build a free compartment neuron, uh, which basically shows the same behavior. Mm. Here's the first experiment where only the, uh, where you only see the PSP and the dendrite. In the second experiment, you see the single spike of the uh, soma, and in the third spike, you see this strong nonlinear non response with the uh, plateau potential and the uh, spike in the and the burst spike burst in the soma. 
<clears throat> so um, what I showed you here are uh, not perfect replications of the references, but you see that the, um, that the main characteristics of the references are there, and this shows us that in simulations the circuit the circuits work, and this makes us uh, like confident that on the real chip, which is in the lab now, and will be measured in detail soon, um, the circuits probably or most likely will also work as they are intended. So, um, if you want to go into details, uh, looking at these multi-compartment circuits or the plateau potentials, and on transistor-level simulations of the neuron for verification purposes, please come and visit my poster. <laughs>